woman, why are you weeping? John chapter 20, verse 13. The question Jesus asked the inconsolable Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene was in tears because she had thought the reason for her life was lost. She had a very bitter past and Jesus had delivered her of all the painful memories of the past. And Jesus was the reason for her joy, for her hope in the future. That reason is lost. Jesus was crucified, buried. Even the dead body is stolen. She had no reason to live anymore. But there's something very significant. The very reason for her grief was standing before her and asking her, why are you weeping? And Mary turned and recognized it was the risen Lord. Jesus called her Mary. Now, dear friends, all of us have manifold reasons to be sad. Reasons of the past, mistakes of the past, of the present, failures of the present, of the future, uncertainty of the future. Every time we are in tears and grief-stricken, the risen Lord is coming to us, asking us, calling us by name, why are you weeping? The cross of Calvary was the sum total of everything wrong, every mistake, every failure, every uncertainty of life. That cross is superseded. The Lord has won victory over the cross. The tomb is empty. The tomb could not contain the risen Lord. The tombstones are thrown away. And we are free. We may have reasons of the past, the mistakes of the past. The Lord is telling us, do not even consider your past. I'm doing something new. And you will say it's sprouting up. Every time we think of the past and weep over the past, the Lord is reassuring us, do not even think of the past. I'm doing something new. Right now, it is sprouting up. And the future, the future, the Lord has taken charge of. The Lord said, why are you anxious about the future? When the Lord is asking that question, there should be a reason for that. And the reason is himself. The Lord who will be there with us at every moment to turn every drop of tear to our joy. That's why St. Paul is telling us, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, Rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. The joy, the reason for our joy is the Lord. The Lord taking charge, taking control of our life and leading us to victory. In the book of Revelation, we read this in chapters 2 and 3. I know your tears to different churches. The Lord is writing, I know your tears, your persecutions. I know your struggles, your troubles. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. And behold, I come to make everything new. The Lord promising to come 
and to make everything new. Whatever is sad, whatever is sick, whatever is uncertain, whatever makes us anxious, the one thing to do is to surrender, to give it all in the hands of the Lord. The Lord is in charge. When I look at the problems, at the troubles, at the struggles, we become anxious. And that's when the Lord is coming, walking on that wave. The wave we imagine would overwhelm us. The Lord is saying, it is I. Don't be afraid. Don't be sad. Our reason to rejoice is not in the money we have, in the security we imagine we have. It's not because there are people for us, but because the Lord is there for us. And he knows everything happening to me. And the one thing we must be doing, what Jesus said to Mary Magdalene, the commission, go and tell my brethren I will meet them. The Lord will meet them. Calling us by name, Mary, as Jesus called Mary Magdalene. Calling us by name, telling us, I'm there for you. And that is the reason for us not to weep, not to be grief-stricken, but turn to the Lord and find our joy in him.